What's up everybody, it is Bucket Mouth Bass I'm back here again today and today I'm going to be showing y'all the top 5 beginner bass fishing mistakes and keep in mind these are not mistakes that only beginners make, even I myself make these mistakes and I see a lot of friends and other people that are better than me at fishing make these exact same mistakes. Even sometimes when I'm watching like the Bassmaster Classic or something, I see these guys making these same mistakes. But like I said, I'm gonna be showing y'all the top five beginner bass fishing mistakes that you need to stop making here today. So hopefully this video helps you guys catch some more fish. And if y'all disagree with anything I say in the video here today, go down below in the comments and let me know but if y'all have not subscribed please go down hit that subscribe button and the bell so you do not miss anything here in the future and if you have any video requests or you guys want to see any informational stuff or any challenges go down in the comments and let me know what you want to see but now that you guys are subscribed let's go ahead and cue the epic music with the intro then we'll dive right into it All right, so now that we got the music and the intro out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with number five and move my way up to number one on today's list. And like I already said, if y'all disagree, go down in the comments and let me know here today. But number five is gonna be not switching lures slash not switching lures enough, guys. I myself am guilty of this. I go out there and I'm like, I'm fishing a crankbait today, fish a crankbait. 30 minutes turns into an hour, an hour turns into two hours, two hours into four hours, and I don't catch anything. So obviously, if you go more than about 30 minutes and you haven't caught on a particular lure and you're moving around spots and stuff like that, you guys need to switch out your lure or your soft plastic, whatever you guys are using. If you fish something and don't catch in about 20 to 30 minutes, then I would highly recommend switching to something else. Even sometimes I make this exact same mistake. I'm just like, I'm going to fish a drop shot I'm going to fish this or that and it just doesn't work out in the end and I waste two to three hours fishing one bait when I could have switched around and possibly actually caught a fish so definitely that one had to make the list because I see a bunch of people doing this they fish the exact same thing for hours on end and catch absolutely nothing and sometimes that will work obviously that's why you're throwing that bait but if it doesn't work in about 20 to 30 minutes I would highly recommend switching to something else again if y'all disagree with anything let me know down below but definitely switch up your baits more often guys and you will definitely start to catch more and more fish and you'll learn how to fish more things too and what the fish like in the body of water that you're fishing whether it's a pond lake whatever it is guys a, a stream or creek whatever else there is there's probably something else that i'm missing now we're gonna move to number four here today not trying enough spots this is a problem that i see mostly at ponds but i do see this problem at lakes too so let me explain what i'm talking about when i say not trying enough spots so obviously at a pond depending on the size of pond you, you might be limited to the area of the pond that you can actually fish but if you guys go for more than about 30 minutes and don't even get a bite or don't even see any activity whatsoever i would highly recommend recommend moving spots on your pond or lake and if there's nowhere else to move on that particular pond I would highly recommend going to a new spot because it just gets real tedious having to sit there and not catch anything and honestly I have made this mistake this was really a mistake that I made earlier on when I was uh, just starting off bass fishing is I would go to a pond and I would fish there the same bait and stand in the same exact spot and not try new spots so definitely try more spots i even see this out on lakes we even make this mistake sometimes even when we see some activity we go an hour plus and don't catch anything in that spot obviously we need to move around more so even i make that mistake on the boat with my old man when we're out fishing so definitely try some more spots guys or if you're gonna stay in the same spot or you have nowhere else to go at least change up the action change up the lure just change up something if it's not working so like i was saying try moving around to more spots try some new things change it up a little bit and you will see yourself slowly start catching more and more fish sometimes when i make a small change like maybe i move from a watermelon red to a black and blue worm 
all of a sudden I start catching fish. So it's not always the big things that matter. Sometimes you just need to move around to more spots or switch up your lure or something like that. Again, if you guys disagree with number four, go down in the comments and let me know. And another thing I wanna throw into number four before I move up to number three is a lot of the times what I notice is once you catch about two to three fish in an area, it really starts slowing down. So even if you guys start catching a lot of fish in the first spot that you go to, likely it's gonna start to slow down as the fish realize what's going on. So that's another reason why I personally would move to more spots so I can catch more fish and catch the fish off guard. Because like I said, let me know if you guys have experienced anything different, but when I catch about two to three fish in one area, usually it starts slowing down. That's not the case all the time, but a lot of the times it really starts to die off and the fish just don't really want to bite. And that happens to me, especially at ponds. So that's why if you're fishing a pond, you definitely have to move because there is a lot less fish than if you're fishing a lake. But still, the same case applies to lakes. You have way more spots to fish. So if you're not catching anything, you definitely need to move and make the most out of your time. Moving on to number three here today, this one is a huge problem I see all the time, and I even made this mistake when I first started fishing. Number three is tying poor knots. My dad still makes the same mistake, and I always get on him for it. For example, we were on the boat the other day, and he was hooked up on a pretty good sized fish, and he actually lost it, and I knew exactly why he lost it when it happened, and I was just like, Dad, you tied an overhand knot, didn't you? And he looked at me, and he was like, yeah, I did. And I was like, stop doing that. So if you guys don't know what not to tie, definitely figure out a better knot to tie. I usually tie the improved clinch knot. It's very easy to tie that knot and it's a very solid knot. So stop tying overhand knots, stop tying lousy knots. Even if you tie the improved clinch knot, like I was saying, or even a polymer knot, there's so many knots to choose from. You gotta make sure you do it right. For example, if you're fishing fluorocarbon, you have to wet the knot before you sift it down or it's gonna be a lot weaker. So, and if you're just fishing mono or braid, you're gonna wanna make sure you sift it down. You're gonna make sure you wanna loop it around your main line enough. Just simple things like that can make a huge huge difference because if you get hooked up on a big fish you definitely do not want to be losing a fish because you tie a lousy knot it's happened to me a bunch of times for example when i first started fishing i was actually fishing with some buddies and i was using a live bluegill i was hooked up it looked like a solid five pounder guys and i let it get away because i tied two overhand knots so definitely do not tie lousy knots figure out what you need to do so you do not lose fish it's simple things like that that make all the difference so like i said i would recommend the improved clinch knot or even the palomar knot there's a lot of knots to choose from but those are the two main ones that i personally use because they're the easiest to tie again if y'all disagree with number three go down and let me know. Now moving on to number two here today. Number two is gonna be using the wrong equipment. So it, oh my gosh, it furiates me when I see this, especially when, anywhere I fish guys, even if I go to a pond or a lake, I always see this crazy stuff. I see like, you know, a one ounce weight with a giant Senko and some, some man out there is throwing this on a medium light rod. You are never gonna be, first of all, before I even continue what I was saying, first of all, you're probably going to break your rod. So that's the first thing. You don't wanna break your rod. Number two is how are you gonna set the hook on a Texas rig with a medium light rod? Exactly, you're not gonna be able to set the hook. Maybe if you're fishing straight braid, you'll be able to set that hook. But if you're fishing mono or fluoro, you're definitely gonna lose fish because you cannot set the hook. At the same time, something my brother does all the time and it really gets on my nerves, he'll pick up a bait casting set up with a medium heavy rod and try and throw like some little like quarter of a quarter of a quarter of an ounce weight with like a little tiny worm and he birds nests the crap out of himself and he's like why am I birds nesting and I'm like you're throwing like a like something that you can barely even throw on a spinning rod so make sure you guys know why you're buying your equipment when you buy it for example if you like to power fish and fish that heavier stuff go buy a medium heavy or even a heavy rod. Don't be out there with a medium light casting rod trying to throw a frog and wondering why you're losing fish. And 
For example, if you like to finesse fish like I like to do a lot, if you like to drop shot, if you like to shaky head fish, I would keep it to the medium or medium heavy category because those are the best rod powers for finesse fishing. So really make sure you know what you're buying before you just go buy random stuff because it looks cool or one of your buddies told you it was cool and that it worked well for him. Understand what you fish and how you're gonna fish it before you just go buy random things and your bird's nesting your reel because you're fishing super light stuff or you're breaking rods because you're trying to throw a, a you know, a one and a half ounce, you know, punching jig on a medium light spinning rod or something crazy like that. I could just go on and on about the equipment. It's very important when you're choosing your equipment. And if you're worried about the weights, like I was saying, it'll say right on the rod what weight the rod can handle. So it makes it real easy. So like I said, use the right equipment when you're fishing and it's really gonna help you catch more fish. All right, moving on to number one on today's list. This is a huge problem. Even I have a problem with this today. Number one is fishing impatiently. Sometimes, especially when the fishing is slow, like in winter or the fall, or even in the summer when or even in the summer and the spring when the fishing is just tough and you downsize, let's say you downsize to a drop shot or a shaky head, or you're just fishing your normal Texas rig, or you don't want to downsize and you're still fishing that big jig. I see everybody at ponds and lakes, they're moving their rods all over the place, they're dragging their baits fast, they're popping up off, up off the bottom. Sometimes you'd be surprised if you do absolutely nothing with your bait, just let it sink to the bottom and slowly drag drag it back to the boat or back to yourself if you're fishing a pond or something like that you will catch significantly more fish that's what i have been doing all winter long i'm just casting my bait out there and just dragging it along the bottom and it works so well to catch finicky bass any time of the year especially at the lake that i fish at they really don't like those big baits and the fish are a little bit smaller so you usually have to finesse fish and fish your baits very slowly when i'm doing all this crazy stuff usually i catch less fish in the springtime when the fishing is good it really doesn't matter what you do but when the fishing is tough sometimes you just got to drag your bait slowly and move your bait slowly so stop reeling so quickly and stop moving your bait so fast guys please i see this all all the time and it's so frustrating and another reason fishing very slowly works is because like I was saying that's what everybody does everybody goes out there and casts their bait out there and moves it super quick through the water so if you're the one fisherman that goes out there and slowly drags your bait along the bottom or it just lets it drift and literally sit there sometimes when I'm fishing a wacky worm at ponds I literally just let it fall to the bottom and sit on the bottom and that's how I've caught the most amount of fish at ponds let me know if it's been different for y'all you can go down in the comments and let me know. But like I was saying, if you guys are the one fisherman that go out there and fish your bait slowly, it's gonna work more of the time just for the simple factor that you're the only person out at your body of water using this method. So that's gonna go ahead and wrap up today's video. If you guys like the video, you can let me know by leaving a thumbs up down below. And if you think I'm ugly and don't like my face or dislike the video, you can leave a dislike down below. But thank y'all so much for watching. And if you made it to this part of the video, go subscribe. What are you guys doing? And hit that bell so you do not miss anything in the future. I got some awesome challenges and crazy stuff coming during the spring and summer. And spring fishing is very, very close. So I'm super excited. But thank you again for watching. And I'll see y'all back here next time.